the wheat that I put out has came up pretty good out here. Now this wheat is um, going to be forage for the calves here. Who happen to be standing here. Um, for some reason they are standing here in the middle of the day because I'm here. And I think, well, maybe he'll bring us some food. Well, I'll bring you some, but it's going to be a while. I don't know if you can tell, but they are getting big. I'm not good at judging weights, but I think they're um, probably 500, 550. I don't know. They're getting pretty big. Pretty big. And they just look, they look beautiful. Uh, nice shiny coats. I think they're in pretty good shape. Real proud of them. Yeah, so the plan here is I'm going to move the electric fence. So right now I have all this fenced off. As you can see, the fence goes up that H brace up there. kind of curves around. So my plan now is to just move that fence which is my semi-permanent three-wire fence but it's no big deal so I'm going to move it and enclose all this area with the wheat and then I'll use a temporary um, single strand fence to fence it off um, and the hay up there but um, we'll see how long it takes us to do this um, about 325 right now and um, of course I'm sure I'll have to cut the video a few times from being too boring so 325 is our reference so here's our corner here um, and from there I'll put a I'll set a corner over here and um, I'll do that first So now that I've got um, all my points, I'll just string a wire um, between the points and then that'll give me a straight line to put the rest of my post. Um, the wire that I use is this poly wire by Gallagher. Um, works pretty well. Um, they have bigger wire called poly rope, which is poly, I call it wire. Um, which is even better, has more strands of metal within it. So it's more conductive and it's also stronger. Um, so far though, this is, has worked really well for me. And um, truth be told, an extra cattle or um, respect the fence. They've got to be taught to re respect the fence. Um, because if they don't, any cow's is going to go right through it. They, they don't know what this is until they get shocked by it. Bring it up through here. Okay, and um, I'll go drive these posts along my straight line now. Um, I've been putting them 15 steps apart, which is about 45 feet. And you always want, um, you want one on a high spot and any low spot. 
Um, that way you don't have big gaps under the fence where you have a low spot or you don't, um, you're not dragging the ground where there's a high spot. So you got to have a post where there's a low spot or a high spot regardless. Okay, okay, so we got all the posts in. I went ahead and disconnected the um, bottom wire, which serves as a ground in this application. So I, I will just remove that, um, or I'll just relocate the bottom wire well, all three wires eventually, but the bottom wire first and um, string it around. And then um, it looks like it may be just about the right length. I may have to add just a little bit to it. Um, yeah, so this was a inside corner. So I'll just take this out and um, Swap it for a regular straight insulator. What you doing there, 53? 53 is coming up to see what I'm up to. And that should be just fine. What's going on, 53? You got a hole in your ear where you lost your ear tag. Yeah, 53's got a hole right through his ear. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Show them the hole in your ear. There it is. Can you see it now? You can see daylight through it. Oh, you're a good boy. You're a good boy, huh? Yep. Anyway. So. Okay, so this one comes the corner and if you saw my previous video I've got the stick with the marks on it. You know where to put my insulators so they're all spaced the same. Yeah so these inside corner insulators I just bought a bag of these or the Zariba uh, got a ton of them off Amazon for hardly anything. So, in general, I get all this stuff off Amazon. It's a lot cheaper if you can wait. And then um, the wire is just Zariba aluminum wire. Uh, real malleable and easy to work with. Snap the rest of the insulators on. Well, I'm going to dump out 
around there. And I brought the wire around the tree on the wrong side. But hey. What do you do? Only two more posts here. You can probably see the wheat's up pretty good. Looking pretty good there. Cows are coming. Following me. And, um, so this post is going to be my gate post. Um, it'll be a pretty long gate, but it won't be open very often um, just to get to the hay. So on this, this will be the gate post here. So I'll be tightening up to this. I just by hand. business. driver you drive a couple of posts for that and you wear blisters on your hands before you know it. Always a good idea to wear gloves. And you get used to it. It's really second nature. So there's the terminus and then I'll tie another one onto this. So the calves are wherever I go they're going. Um, Every time I walk back down there to the pen, they come running down there. So, they're just hanging out. I don't think they're particularly hungry. But, um, they are... They're not really eating the wheat. Um, there's wheat they can get to there, but they don't seem too interested in it. I don't know. So of course I got this hay ring and hay right in the way. So much for um, 
adequate forethought and planning. But that's all right. So I just moved the hay ring over against that tree for now. And I'll pull the hay over with a bucket on the tractor and uh, that'll be no problem. Yeah, so put the gate right here. There's this tall, um, this tall blue stem grass that's all up over here. Happy to see it. Although, um, when it's tall, the calves don't like it, but I'll bet they'll eat it this winter when there's nothing else. I'll just, um, put this insulator here so the strands a little bit too short so I think I'll go ahead and the nice thing about this um, is that you can work with it so easily, cut it and um, splice it. And I don't know, um, I never have bothered to look at the proper splicing technique that they tell you. Um, I do it, there's a knot I learned a long time ago for joining two lines of equal size, put the two tag ends together, form a circle like that, and then just weave those in around and around like a regular knot several times pull it tight and then that provides a good connection because the wires wrapped around and around itself and it's also a real strong knot use that in um, for joining two lines of equal size. I've used it um, oh, for different things, for ropes and um, all kinds of things, but it's a good strong knot and a quick knot and an easy one that I can remember. Got some aluminum wire. I like this stuff, Gallagher aluminum wire. So basically, what I do is just to make the connection, I just wrap this round and round and round for a pretty good distance so that you make a good electrical connection. And then I do the same thing on this. I just twist it around here several times. Get rid of that tag end there. And this, I mean, you can do however you want, but I make a loop here. And then go around it a couple times. my 
link the gate. So I'll put my handle on here and tighten this down until I pull it tight. Until I stretch this out, it's spring loaded, so get a little bit of spring action going there. And then you can tighten that if you need to. So wherever you have it now, if you pull it tighter, you'll get a little more tension. And where it is now is where, where it's going to be, where the tension will be. I just try to run it around this several times to make a good contact with the metal and the handle. got a better knot than I do. And then I'll just repeat that process um, for the two upper wires. And that'll be that. Um, Yeah, so that's the gate. It's pretty long, but um, I need one here to get into the hay. And keep it fenced out where the calves can't get to it this winter. And uh, yeah, so there's the gate. And I'll just um, repeat that same procedure for three more wires. And that'll be that. Okay, so I put the other two strands up and this fence is now complete. I can see it here. It's now five o'clock. So that was about an hour and a half to build this.